Okay, so here's what we got going. The table itself is two feet wide, so when it's in place, it'll sit right in line with this and come out, sit right here because that indent we put, so it sits up here. So it's also an inch high, so we have to raise up this wood around it so it's even and the cushions all feel normal when you're laying on it when it's down as a bed. So I need to cut this at 10 and 3 eighths piece of one inch wood I have from here to here. And that's going to sit all the way across here. And then I just have to fill in this little spot on both sides and add to this piece. So once I do that, when the table slides in, it should all be just about flush and it'll look good and fit good. So here's my first piece in and it fits just about perfectly. A little bit of a gap there, down there is flush. It sits right on my line, which is perfect. So now I just have to cut here. So that's going to go from right about here all the way to the end. It should, it should be good. All right, so now I got those two extra filler pieces cut. And this from dry fit looks like it's gonna be pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the last pieces for those inserts. And then I'm gonna test the table with the whole thing and I'll see how it goes. All right, so I did the test fit of the table and it fit pretty well. I had to cut, I had to shave a little bit off the end of this just to make sure it fit. Once I got that off, I realized there's a bit of a rock in it. Um, so I'm gonna add a piece of, a quarter inch piece of plywood to this side, and then um, screw the rest of these boards down. And that should be, that should make it fit. And I'm probably gonna paint these boards white once they're down. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I already got this little piece. which covers that. Same with the other side, right here. I've kind of brought it out a little bit so that it covers this end, just so that I hope, I'm thinking it'll make it look better. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'll show you what the table looks like and how the fit is. All right, so here is the table. What I end up doing to get rid of that rock is actually put a small piece right here, goes to about here, and it completely took care, 99% took care of that rock. So um, what's left is to screw all these down and then yeah, I'll explain the table to you. Let's talk about how we made this table. So we started with really thick pieces of barn wood that were up to an inch thick. Uh, pulled off a of barn locally here. Um, my friend had them. And what we did is I couldn't find the piece I was going to show you. I think it got stolen out of the truck. But uh, kind of funny because these pieces were here too. And these are the nice pieces. I don't know why they didn't take these. Maybe they did. Just take a few. Don't make it too obvious. Anyways, so what we did first is we took these, put them, put them on the table saw, get this nice edge here, both sides. Made sure we got all the nails out, turned it over, put it through the planer, and got it down to thickness, which is about uh, half an inch. And this is, I'm going to explain that weird part I told you about. Alright, so we put together this set up here. As you can see under here, the we have this piece of plywood right here. This is the distance of the cutout. For the kitchen table. Now before this was just a piece of wood that I think they made and set in here and then that's because this which is the actual width of the table this does not fit in without extruding seven and a half inches so right from here to here is about seven and a half inches and what this does is this lifts it up so it'll slide on and then this will cut out here makes it so that it'll slide over the top, which is why there's the big cutout in the seating area. So all this really does is just make it so that the table is usable as both a bed and
stand as a table without needing to change out parts like you had to originally do. So bring it around to the front. So as you can see, and there's the barn wood. It's a little dusty, but you see the barn wood. On top of that, we did epoxy. And then the outside trim is just alder that I've stained and I had to sand it a little bit. I'll probably stain it again with like a polyurethane or something just to help it from getting too dented. And then, uh, yeah, on top, this is glaze coat epoxy, which I'll link in the description. Um, it's really good stuff. You just got to make sure you seal. If you're using really porous wood like this, seal it first with like, they say use a quarter of the um, mix you're going to need for it. And I got a pint and that covers nine square feet, I believe. So this took actually two because I didn't do the glaze coat. I mean, I didn't do the first coat um, to help kind of seal all the holes. And we got a lot of them that dipped down, created a lot of bubbles, and then, yeah, so we had to sand it down and reapply it, and uh, that worked pretty well. Sanded it out with 80 grit, went back over it with 150, 220, 400, and then 600, and then poured it back on, and I think it turned out pretty well. So, um, yeah, this is it for the table, and then i got one more thing to show you that I just barely picked up. I got some. And so I gotta show you. I gotta show you these I just picked up. These are countersink bits. Um, I didn't have any before. I was just kind of going in by hand, and it was getting a lot of chip out in the wood. So I bought these, and they actually work pretty well. I did have one break on me after like seven or eight holes. That could have been because I torqued it weird, but I mean, other than that, I think they're pretty good. Um, and it's helped me do all of this. It helped me do all of this. Or most of it anyway. And I think it sucked them down pretty well. As you can see, there's my little extra piece I had to lay down. And then, yeah, so that's the table. And I think it's going well.